Okay, so I'm going to show you through, this is your sterile field. You've got your chlorhexidine in the kidney dish here, um, which will later be used for your sharps dish. So you've got some gauze that'll be used for your cleaning. You've got your pick kit. So just lift off the uh, lift tab and pass that off to your assistant to keep yourself clean. So in here you have your needle, your syringe for your saline flush, your scalpel blade for making a nick in the skin. This is your dilator and introducer. So this bit locks into place, so make sure that's locked in. And then you have your stat lock, which you'll save for the dressing later, as well as your dressing. Now you have two guide wires here. Remember, this is the guide wire for the modified Seldinger technique. This is your hydrophilic wire that may be used to stiffen your pick line if you're having difficulty inserting. I just tuck that underneath because I don't prepare it at the start. So your guide wire and then your pick line which you will draw up your saline from your assistant and your lignocaine from your assistant with your blunt drawing up needle, okay? So it is perfectly safe to recap the blunt drawing up needle. Remember, you still discard it like a sharp. So you would double check your lignocaine 1% and the expiry date and then draw that up and then you would attach your blunt drawing up needle to your 10 mil syringe and double check your 0.9% sodium chloride plus the expiry date and draw that up. And then you would put that aside for your sharp spin and you will attach your, when you've got your saline flush to your bung. And then onto the end of your pick line to flush it. So I've just drawn up my saline and my lignocaine, which I can attach my 25 gauge or smaller needle for the intradermal injection. Make sure you get rid of all of the air. You can loosen the cap and just pop that to the closest side of your working surface. You'll find your bung. Attach your syringe to it, take off the protective cap at the end, attach that to your pick line and flush it to make sure a saline comes out the end. Nice and steady. Then you can pop that with your dressing and your stat lock for later because you won't need that until your line is inserted. Now at this point, you can go ahead and take some chlorhexidine and if your patient was able to move their arm, you would ask them to lift their arm and clean the posterior of the back, uh, posterior of their arm. When you've cleaned the posterior of the arm, you would discard your dirty cleaning stick, unwrap your fenestrated drape, keep that safe, and then you would place this underneath the patient's arm and get them to lay their arm down on the drape, but with the palm facing up. Now, because the training arms don't lift up, we're going to skip that step. But you can proceed with the next step, which is some more chlorhexidine, and you're going to start cleaning from your intended insertion site outwards over the whole of the upper arm. So my intended vessel is the basilic vessel. So without touching the skin, I am going to start cleaning in a friction movement over the intended surgeon site, getting larger and more increasing coverage. And then all the way up and down the arm, taking care not to contaminate yourself against the tourniquet all the way down the end and then discard your dirty 
cleaning stick or swab. We're going to allow that to dry. I'm going to now use my kidney dish as my sharp spin so I can pop my blunt drawing up needle in that. So when the chlorhexidine alcohol is dry, you're going to remove the peel tabs on your fenestrated drape and discard those. You're going to observe where the head images and align the drape with the head. And when you place the drape down, you want to make sure the adhesive is on the clean side of the tourniquet, so the part of the arm that has been cleaned. So it may help to come to the side of the patient, make sure to wrap the uh, sticky bits around the arm, cover down the arm, cover across the patient, taking care not to touch the patient. Uh, this drape has been refolded in an incorrect fashion. You would usually do the feet second. So cover up the head. Your assistant or you, if you've got a sterile area, can make a little tent for the patient, but be careful not to de-sterilize yourself. That might be easiest if you have your assistant doing it. This is just a protective covering. And make sure your drape is adhered to your patient in an appropriate location for your vascular access. You would pull down the foot part second. Now also remembering that we do not currently have any sterile ultrasound probe covers. So you will not see the ultrasound probe in a cover. But if you were using this in a clinical situation, you would absolutely have a sterile probe cover on your ultrasound. So with some sterile gel on the patient, you would take your ultrasound probe in your non-dominant hand, ascertain which is the probe left and the probe right in correlation with the ultrasound screen and identify your target vessel. Now, you may wish to spread out your items a bit more so that they're in a nice orderly fashion Remembering to maintain your image on the screen, don't drift. You will take your intradermal injection, bevel up, very shallow angle, just underneath the skin, and inject looking for a bleb. Once you've seen that, you will pull your sharp out and pop it straight in your sharp zone. Next, you will take your needle, go in through your intradermal injection with an angle that is appropriate for the depth of your vein and ensure at all times you can see your needle tip. So if you can see my ultrasound screen, I am right on the edge of the vessel wall. I am now going to slide my probe away a little bit and then advance my needle into the vessel, slide my probe away a little bit make sure I'm in the center of the vessel, at which point I should see flashback, which I have, and I can place my sterile ultrasound away from my needle. At this point, I'm going to take my wire guide and thread that, sorry, my guide wire, thread that, and it should be smooth up the wire. Now, please excuse this bent wire, it has been used before. We are now going to remove our needle and place it in a sharp, safe zone. Now you can, at this point, wipe away your ultrasound gel because you do not need it and it helps to keep your environment and your pick line clean. What you do want to do is activate your scalpel blade, bevel up and run it along the wire, just in five or so mils, appropriate to the depth of your vessel Retract the scalpel into your sharp, safe zone. You're going to take your introducer and dilator, again, making sure it's locked in. You're going to thread the wire up the internal lumen and ensure you have adequate 
wire length out the back of your introducer dilator so that there's no risk of it getting lost. You may need to put traction on the skin and you're going to feed the introducer dilator all the way in until the hub. Now at this point, if you're using a tourniquet, you can release that, okay? Because you do not need to engorge the vein, the dilator will hold the vein open for you. Bring your pick line close. Be prepared for blood to come out of your internal uh, introducer and dilator. So just pop that on your working surface and you're going to feed your pick line in. It should flow in or slide in nice and easily. You would have pre-measured your patient's chest to know approximately how far in it's going. I've placed it 35 centimeters. That's approximately the internal length for an adult. And at this point, I would be making sure, or just a little bit earlier, I had some tip guidance technology either available in the room or on their way. So that might be in the form of radiographers bringing either an x-ray machine or a fluoroscopy machine. Now, once you have your pick tip in the correct position, and remember there are three textbook locations for that, um, then you would, holding the pick line where it is, slowly retract the introducer, and then it snaps apart and peels. You would make sure your pick line has not migrated out, and then you'd pull the uh, introducer over it, and peel it apart and then pull and peel and pull and peel pull and peel it off entirely so that is single use and you would make sure you are at the 35 centimeters or whatever your tip location was so once you've attached your syringe you will aspirate blood into the clear portion, so you may or may not be able to see that's just gone blue, so that's venous blood, into the clear portion of the pick line, and then force, push, pause, remembering not to empty your syringe as your flush. Now, if your pick line does have a clamp, uh, disengage the syringe, let the positive pressure device do its thing, and then clamp the line. You would, you could do one of two things. You could attach your stat lock. So the uh, stat lock sits over the two blue components and then just lock, oh, don't lock yourself into place. Lock into place. And then you'd put that up out of the way of the insertion site and then you would take your IV dressing and ensure that your insertion site is covered by the clear part of the dressing. And then you could wrap the wings or legs, depending on which way you look at it, over the top, okay? So it doesn't matter that there's a little bit of line exposed there, the insertion site is covered, the stat lock is heading in a kephalad direction. You are safe to remove the drape off of the patient, warning them that pulling the adhesive drape off may be uncomfortable to their arm, which it stuck particularly well here. You would dispose of your sharps, in one motion into the sharp spin. It should be large enough to receive all of this. You would discard the rest of your items into the general waste, and then you would doff your gown and gloves and hand hygiene. And that is what your pick line would look like for your patient with that up 